Ariel Hawani in Las Vegas for UFC 178 alongside the notorious Conor McGregor who faces Dustin Poirier this Saturday live on pay-per-view. And Conor, it's good to see you. A couple days ago I saw you say never turn down an opportunity to wear a three-piece suit. Your first UFC pay-per-view media day and your casual Thursday. Well, you, you've, got, yeah, well, you've got to realize it's a Thursday. You know, there's business to be attended, but I must make weight here. And comfort is a, is a beautiful thing. I'm not here to, to wear a suit while I'm, you know, my suits are custom fitted, right? Custom fitted to perfection. These, all these other guys are used to loose fitting suits, suits that hang, that American look. Like even look at your, look at your arms, it goes away. It's not, it's not correct, so you're used to that. Me, I'm not used to that. Me, mine is crisp perfection. So when I lose a couple of kilos as I'm bringing my weight down, I, I end up with that. And when I wear that and I don't look that, well, it's not too bad, but with the rest of the guys, when I end up putting that on, I don't feel so good, you know what I mean? So I will stick to the vest top, I will represent Detron, my, my clothing apparel, uh, and, and carry on. But I tell you what, tune in post fight, oh boy, that is a phenomenal suit I have lined up that will blow you away. And I cannot fucking wait to wear it, yeah? <laughs> I keep showing everyone that walks in the room, look at this one, look at this one. It's the best one I've ever had. It's Vegas all over, yeah? What do you say to the people? You know, I know you've been here for a few weeks now, and uh, we see you in the big suite at the Red Rock. We see you hanging out with Dana White and company watching the fights, that the UFC is favoring you a little too much, that they're, they're giving you the extra treatment. What do you say to those people that they're, they're putting too much stock in you? Um, you know, at the end of the day, I must get in and perform. So whatever they do outside, whatever they do outside the octagon means nothing. I must get in and perform for this. So, and I do. I get in and perform. I show up, and I, I'm a professional inside the octagon, and, I, and I'm a professional outside the octagon. Some people like to hate on that, but that's that's not that's not my problem. You know, I I, I show up and I show up ready to fight. So, they are they are rewarding me for it. But again. Saturday night, I will go in and prove my wood once again. Like time and time again, I will prove my wood every single time, and, and that is it. I have I have a good relationship with my employers. There is nothing wrong with that. Um, haters are gonna hate, as they might say in America. Does this feel a little different though? I mean, this isn't a fight night in Dublin. This is not Sweden. Does this feel different here? I don't know. It feels all the same to me. You know, it's it's brilliant to to see my name in lights and see, and being here in Vegas. I'm embracing it all as I go on. But as far as it overwhelming me, I don't think there's there's very much that could overwhelm me. I could go anywhere on planet Earth and still whoop ass and look good. You know, so this is and honestly, this feels like another day for me. Another day. Has life changed at all since Dublin? Yeah, definitely. I got a hell of a lot richer. Um, How much more richer? That's none of your business, but I, I, I am comfortable now, you know, I, and I, I'm climbing the money tree. I'm climbing the money tree like a chimpanzee. But, uh, typically, you say you like to spend all your money before your next fight, so are you now out of all that money? Uh, well, that would be hard in the space of eight weeks, but I, know, that I did. would be impressive as well. Yeah, well, I did go through a bit, but no, again, I'm, sm I'm becoming more intelligent now, I think, to this game. You know, I'm building. My, my manager says, stack, don't buy. So I like that one. I like that one a little bit, but you're evolving on us. Yeah, you might, you might, you might say. You know, people say like, "Don't go broke trying to look rich." You know, you ever hear that? Yes. But then I'll say to that, "But rich is my favorite look." So I don't know. I'm, I'm in two minds here. We'll see. But again, back-to-back -back fights has helped me just kind of stay on the path and not go nuts. We'll see after this fight. Who knows? I might be ripping down a Ferrari uh, in a Ferrari on Sunday uh, afternoon down the Las Vegas Strip. Who knows? I tell you what, we can do a drive around Vegas instead of a walk around Ireland when I was cutting weight. Like now, I'm cutting weight as well. Give me. This shouldn't be on a Tuesday. This should be on a Wednesday, maybe Tuesday even. You know, but you should tell Uncle Dana he listens to you. Okay, well, we'll see. I, I will. I mean, he'll probably see this, so we will see. You know, a lot of people might also say that you are the biggest name on this card because you have a whole country behind you. You know, some of these fighters are big in their respective cities, maybe their states, but it's not a whole country. Would you agree that you are the biggest star on UFC 178? Um, again, I don't really care about these things, but pro I probably am, you know. You don't care about it at all? I care about the numbers. I care about... I care about climbing that tree you know that's what I'm talking about I don't care about nothing else as far you know I probably am it's, you're probably correct I mean is there anyone in in this room that could fill a football stadium is there anyone in the UFC that could fill a football stadium I'd say there's maybe two three max athletes that could in the UFC that could fill a football stadium and you're speaking to one right now so there's no doubt I am, I am up there but again the fight must take place the performance must be put on so I don't read too much into it I just embrace it and enjoy it and carry on what happened yesterday between you and him? We saw an embedded, there was a bit of a, a stare down. And uh, afterwards they followed him. He 
he did not like it at all and said that he never felt this way about an opponent. What, what was that all about? Um, I don't know. We came, we, we met each other in the lobby or whatever, and he was, he said, I'm ready. He said, I'm ready or something. And I said, yeah, get ready. To, you're ready to fall. Or get I don't know what I said. But then he was like nervous and fidgety. I could sense panic in the young boy. I could see it in him. You know what I mean? I can, you can't hide it. You know, you can, you can hide it with words, but you can never hide it with your eyes and with your body language. It's impossible. So I sensed panic in him. And then when I saw the embedded thing, I was laughing. I thought it was funny, you know, for him to run out there and be like crying and all this type of stuff. It, it amuses me, to be honest, you know. But again, I'm not, I'm not here to show these people rem uh, remorse. You know, I'm here to be ruthless and get in and, and eliminate everybody. So it's all fun and games to me. I, I, sh I have no emotion towards him, good or bad. I don't dislike him and I don't like him. I don't anything him. For me, he does not exist. So for him to have these emotions for me, it reminds me of similar opponents that I have faced. So I will take confidence in that because I know coming into a contest emotionally charged is never good. You, you're, you're tired in the warm-up. You're, 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 you're gassed out in the warm-up. Your, your first exchange, you want out. I, I, I sense the same in Dustin. And again, we will see, but usually when I speak something, guess what happens? It comes true. Do you believe you have won half the battle? Are you in his mind? Yeah, 100%. You know, I've definitely... I definitely am I'm in his head. I'm not only his head, I believe I'm in everybody's head at the minute, you know, so it's it's perfect. I'm just a little Irish crazy kid that doesn't give a shit what none of these guys think, and I'm just here handling my own business. Yesterday, the UFC announced that Frankie Edgar is fighting Cub Swanson, and both of them believe that's the number one contender fight just based on the rankings. What's your response to that? Um, you know, we will see, but I believe... I, I believe... Um, Dustin Falls are going to give me that shot. They can't. How can they? How can they not give me it? Cub could not finish Dustin. Cub decisioned him, and a close decision at that. So for me to go out and blow Dustin away, which I will do, what else can I do? Who else can they give me? I mean, if anything, they, they might give me. They might want to give me some other low, lower, a, a, a lower step down or something. Who knows what way they will play it? But they will know after this contest that I am ready for a world title. I most certainly will campaign for a world title. I know everyone that witnesses the fight will campaign for me for a world title. I know McGregor versus whoever sells more than Cub Frankie versus whoever. You know what I mean? So we will see what way they decide to do it. But I certainly will campaign for it. I certainly will strive for it. And, and that is that. Do you still envision being championed by the end of the year? Yeah, 100%. I, again, I believe it's there. This fight's four weeks from, from uh, after this fight, the title fight is. Who knows what could happen? I will stay in shape. I won't, act, I won't mess around. I will keep my weight down. I will stay in the gym. If an opportunity arises, I will dive all over it. And that, that is who I am. So there, there's an avenue right there. Again, the Cub, Swanson, Edgar fight could happen. And then end of year card, they could either do me versus the champion or them versus the champion. Who, what sells more? That's at the end of the day, that's what matters. What sells more? What, what makes more money? What, will, what do the fans want to see? And there's no denying what the fans want to see. The fans want to see McGregor in for a world title. There's no denying that. So we will see what way they play it. But I will certainly campaign for it with everything I have. And I will go at everyone in the division until I get it. Final question. How do you envision the fight actually playing out on Saturday? Because I know you're, you're big on you know, vision and, and, and you have a sense for these things. So when you think about the fight, how do you see it playing out? Um, yeah, I see him coming out panicked. I see him coming out on a panic. Now, it will either result in two things. He will come forward in a panic or he will back off in a panic. But either way, he'll be in a panic. I believe the very first exchange, he will be hurt, and he will be hurt badly. He won't, know, he, he won't, he won't have felt that power before. He won't have felt that smoothness before, that clinical precision before. I don't miss. And I, vi I visualize him being there every single shot I throw, him being right there. So I, I, first exchange, he's definitely on one knee. He's definitely wobbled badly. Then I believe he'll be on the back foot. Then I believe I will play with him. End of the first round, he will be, he will be unconscious. Can't wait for it. Thank you for the time. Best of luck, Connor. Thank you.